I'm Lee Morrison and welcome back to Bespoke Edit YouTube channel. Um, in this episode I'm going to be um, dealing with the handle which is um, it's, it's splitting between, between the scales. This is rather common. Um, we've already done a huge amount of work in the previous episode on the, on the skins and um, if you haven't already watched that one um, it's, it's, it's really quite interesting to see how you um, when, when the scales fall apart, a little like jigsaw, um, it's like an old jigsaw, they completely fall apart. Um, if you haven't already watched those episodes so I think you'll find it quite interesting. But this one, um, we're going to be looking looking at the handle. Now, handles on old bags and cases, they're all rather similar as, as a general rule. They're, they're quite a similar sort of construction. So this, this repair, and whether you've got a ladies' handbag, a gentleman's briefcase, or a suitcase, it should prove very helpful. And um, they're all of a very similar construction. So um, whether it be an exotic skin like this or a more regular calf skin, um, we need to, let's have a much, much closer look and we'll come in really close and uh, so you can see what I'm talking about and I will remove, I'll remove this handle with a blade. So um, looking in very close here, we can see the, um, the damage to the skins. Um, it's completely separated. The scales do separate. Um, you can see it much worse there. There's whatever's inside. Inside, it's... Um, that, that gives the, back, the, the the handle its sort of roundness. So it'll be like a piece of cord. It might even be rolled up newspaper. We'll find out when we open that. Somebody at some point has pushed in a piece of, it looks like just calf skin. Um, yeah, it's, it's definitely in there, but I don't think it's glued. Um, it's been very cleverly done actually. And it was like that when I bought it, but um, the damage has got considerably worse whilst I've been using it. You can see at the back here, all these, all these light lines where the scales are completely separated and very much like it had on the rest of the bag. Um, so what we will do, um, we will cut along this line here. The stitching, the stitching comes through all the layers. So we'll cut that with a blade on both sides. So I'll unfill, completely unfill and see what's inside. Um, as I say, too, there'll be something inside, maybe a piece of cord, or it might be rolled up newspaper that gives it this sort of bulky roundness. Um, I need to get this skin off, lie the skin flat. And likewise, what we did with the, um, the, 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 the main skins here, this needs to be patched from behind. Um, I'll be unlikely to be using the chamois. Um, I've got some, um, this is just a poultry fabric. It's, um, it's a better colour match and it's, it's a bit thicker, a bit stronger. Um, it does take quite a lot of, um, quite a lot of uh, abuse to handle. So we need something a little bit stronger. And there is a high likelihood that these scales will separate slightly. And what I don't want is uh, when the scales sort of naturally separate that we cut this almost white showing through. It'd be much better if it's a closer colour match. Um, alligator and crocodile generally separates um, between the scales. Now, more regular skins like calf skin, um, they often rip here and the handle just pulls away. It just snaps off and it's flapping about, becomes totally useless. That happens on all sorts of old bags, suitcases and uh, handbags, gentlemen's briefcases. Uh, the more common areas that they split here. And this repair that I'm going to show you would be the, the same repair that you would do, whether it's alligator, exotic, any other exotic or regular calf. Right, let me get my, um, let me get my knife. I'm just going, to, just going to trim along here. I'll put my glasses on as well. I'm rather long-sighted, so uh, I need my glasses to be able to see the close-up work. Let's have a look. It's just a cheap craft knife. I've got to be very, very careful not, not to cut the skin. I only want to break the stitching. It's uh, just a slow, fiddly job. And uh, when I've got this off, which might take a minute or two, you know, it's uh, obviously be very careful not to chop my fingers. There we go. Start it. Oh, there we go. Starting to separate. Um, keep going. Push the knife out a little bit more. But, uh, there'll be a stronger leather leather band inside. Um, this will be like almost like um, belt, belt type, you know, off, a, off, a, off the belt of a trousers. It was, it was a similar sort of thickness and strength. And if it's totally broken, you can use an old belt. But um, it's going to take a few minutes to to cut all the way through. Just uh, slowly break the original stitching. I'll do all of one side, then I'll turn it over and do the other side. But, uh, it, it's going to take a few minutes. But, uh, you can't rush this. There we go. There we go. So you can see, 
quite clear now it's starting to open up you can just see the the edges of the original stitching but I'm trying not to cut against the alligator skin I'm trying to cut on the much tougher skin in 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 the center here which is uh, it, there's two layers the main strength for my handle comes from a regular skin it's like um, saddle hide or belt uh, belt uh, leather and then they're much more decorative uh, there we go it's uh, that sash cord I'll try and keep that intact. Um, without that cord, um, the, the, the handle simply wouldn't have its roundness. I'm doing a suitcase at the moment, a um, very similar job. It's, it's failed here and it's, it's also split. And that's actually got rolled up newspaper. To be honest with you, I'm replacing the rolled up newspaper with sash cord. Um, when I say sash cord, it's from Victorian windows. You know, the type of windows that go up and down on a, on a weight. That's what the cord's from. So let's just it's going to take me a good few minutes to carefully get this off let's have a look open that up yeah we can see very clearly inside um, there's a there's a cord sash cord um, let's have a look tiny little bit of stitching still left here get my fingers out of the way just scratch away very carefully I really want to cut the stitching I don't want to do any further damage to the to the alligator I think yeah that's one side completely done yes it is and uh, ooh, might be a bit more in this corner down here but um, we'll find out when I do the other side so let's um, let's turn it round and do exactly the same on the other side just start by pulling my knife in a little bit don't want quite so much blade showing you can you can see the uh, you can see the gap where the two pieces of stronger leather join I'm just trying to slide slide the belt the the, the 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 slide the blade along that um along that edge you can feel the individual stitches giving way click 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 there we go yeah so i cut along here then slightly if i need to then a bit more carefully against the actual alligator itself and um it's a few it's a few minutes it takes four, you know, three or four minutes a little, perhaps a little bit longer Per side. Okay, I'm getting very close now to having all of this stitching undone. You can see the whole thing starting to separate. Let's have a look. We've just got a few stitches. It's just a case of slowly scratching away. You can feel each individual stitch if you press carefully enough. You can feel them give way one by one. Here we go. Oh, that's okay. Yep. Yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah, so. Don't want to rough it around too much. So I can get the alligator off separately, I think. So have a look, I need a bit more here. Got to be very careful not to slice the tips of my fingers. Oh, gosh, there we go. It's totally fallen away. So we will, uh, yeah. Here we go, this is just gonna be like a patchwork try and get it off in as solid a single piece as I can. Let me see what's happening here. It's, uh, oh, lost another bit, there it goes. Let's put them all down here. I'll have to fiddle around and work out how this goes back together later. I think there's still a few stitches just down here. Yep, here we go. That's, oh, there we go. That's that piece coming off. <laughs> yeah, it's just totally fallen to pieces. But never mind. We can uh, we can easily sort this out afterwards. Um, the sash cord is in still quite good condition, as is. Actually, no, it's not. The um, the original uh, the original leather inside there is a bit of a mess too. I don't. Th I think I'll. End yeah, I will. It's. Um, is, is completely failing. Um, I'll replace this um, first. You know, it's a separate job and I'll use just simple belt leather. I'll copy exactly the same shape and stitch it in place on its own. Then I will put the alligator skin back on with the sash cords. But of course the alligator will have been, um, it will have been uh, joined back together. Um, I'll join it with um, I said earlier this was um, upholstery fabric. Of course it's not, it's upholstery leather. Um, so um, 
I will put the upholstery lever on the on the inside and I will I'll, I'll simply glue the alligator skins to the upholstery leather make it make it nice and firm and flat when it's when it's totally glued I'll trim off all the excess so it'll be one long piece um, it, uh, they, they, you know, let's have a look. is the sash cord going I'm not sure oh no that's just a um, just a piece of uh, piece of paper actually it's a piece of card that the sash cord must have been wrapped in um, but the sash cord does seem to be yeah there it is um, it's just slipped off so it's 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 Victorian sash cord wrapped in paper um, I suppose it makes it slightly more um, slippy inside it's like a sleeve I suppose the, if, if it um, if it's completely the, the sash cord is fixed to the leather it's more likely to crack I suppose it needs to be able to slip around just a millimeter or two inside I'm assuming that that paper that it's wrapped in helps that but uh, I'll try and keep it as intact as I possibly can um, but as you can see this is quite a mess uh, let's just um, try and get the rest of it off where are we Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it looks frightening but um, with time you can easily work out what goes where and just the important bit is not to lose anything um, to try and get this last piece out here we go just slide that out of there here we go that's it easy job <laughs> and um, we will uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave that in place because I need to um, I need to get um, I do have it somewhere, it's not to hand. Um, I need, I've got some old belts. Um, so I'll make a, a, complete, a, a complete copy um, before I uh, cut the stitching. But it's ever so simple. It's very, very crude. Um, we've just got a single piece that runs around here. And then it's got like ears. You can see them here, look. Uh, they, they wrap around. So there's three thicknesses there. One, two, three. And there's only one thickness there. Um, but it's quite strong. That's where the strength of this bag comes from. It comes from the the, the thick sort of saddle-like um, calf hide inside. It, it definitely doesn't come from the alligator skin. There's no real strength in alligator skin. So um, I will um, I'll clean these up. It, it's going to be a very fiddly job. It will take me at least an hour or two to to clean up. I have to pick out all the bits of stitching, um, slowly clean it, um, work out exactly what goes where. And I will simply, very, very simply, take some old, um, old skin, old upholstery skin, and I will be laying, let's do it up here, I'll be laying the alligator sections, just getting them in exactly the right position, and then just, then just glue it in place. Um, I'll probably have to push the, the, um, the sash cord, push that inside, just to get the um, correct shape. And uh, it's a fiddle, and um, it'll take me an hour or two. But once it's in one piece, it's very, very easy then to thread it all back. And um, when, when, the, um, when the alligator goes back on, um, I will use the original holes in the alligator skin to re-stitch re it by hand. You know, just try and re-stitch wherever possible through the original holes. Um, it's very important when, um, when gluing leather to use um, the correct leather adhesives. You can't just use standard, um, you know, the, the type that comes in a, in a little tube um, from uh, craft, uh, not from craft shops, from DIY shops, hardware stores. Um, general purpose adhesives go rather hard. They're extremely good, but they're no good for, um, for leather work. You do need them to be hard and flexible, whereas leather adhesive dries very, very hard, very strong. Um, but it's not stiff, it's not brittle, it's, it's a very strong, very strong and flexible. Um, do avoid using um, standard uh, DIY contact adhesive. So, um, a lot of cleaning up to be done here. Um, I will, uh, I'll, I'll come back with um, what's a, a fragment, like a jigsaw puzzle now. Um, it's going to take quite some time, too fiddly and too messy, quite frankly, to be doing on camera. I, I don't want to be dressed like this whilst I'm using adhesives. Um, but um, very simple, and I'll, I'll come back when it's all glued in one piece, and this will be replaced um, with brand new leather. Exactly the same size and shape, but this has got very little left in it. It's just about to split. It's got a cut here. Yeah, that's going to snap very, very shortly. So, yeah. The whole thing will be brand new. 
So I've done quite a lot of work um, off camera. Um, it's actually been around about a week um, since you saw me uh, trimming away the handle. This is partly replaced. Um, we've got the original, um, here it is. This is the um, this is the inner inner lining of the handle, which um, we we saw um, was was rather split. So um, I've made a I've made a replica, and um, it's, it's it's actually quite straightforward. It's just very fiddly. Um, so yeah, it's partly stitched on this side, and this is the original. Um, the original was strange. Um, quite often they're in one one long piece, which is wrapped all the way around. Um, this one's actually in three. Um, we've got the the, the the central handle piece, and then it, it has um, loops, uh, which are on on the uh, on the edges here. It's a bit of a fiddle, um, but I've copied it exactly. Um, I do I do have another one, um, which this is a bag I started actually. It's a rather lovely old suitcase. I started this a couple of years ago. Let's get this one out of the way. I'll give you a quick. I can get this out of the way without damaging it. Let's just slide that along there. Um, started this a couple of years ago. I've just never got around to finishing it. Um, the uh, the handle on this one is um, ex exactly the same as uh, with the uh, doctor's bag here. The the outer scales are all all separated. Now this one, um, the inner lining it survived rather well, and it's actually one long piece. Um, it's just literally wrapped all the way around, and I've restitched it back through the original holes. And um, that one doesn't have the um, the fiddly sort of ear pieces on the uh, on the edges here. Um, well. I'll try and remember to zoom in on that in a, in, a, in, a, in a few seconds so you can have a better look at that. Um, a lot of these bags are all the same, whether they be briefcases, ladies' handbags, suitcases, whatever, the structure is very, very similar. Um, also off camera, I've, um, I've put the, uh, the, these, these mounting cards, um, I've made a much better fit. Um, it took probably about an hour of fiddling about, just getting a perfect fit. I haven't glued any of them in place, but you can see them all in dark. You know, we've got, uh, they're all in dark green, each, each corner. And uh, there's another one here, one at the side. Um, I think there's about eight. Yeah, there are eight pieces in total. They all need gluing in place. I'm not going to do that on camera. It's a messy job. I don't want to risk getting it on my clothes. So I'll do it in better light um, somewhere, somewhere else. And um, very simple process. You just glue both sides. Uh, you know, and, and, and slide these in place. Um, it does need to be leather adhesive, not general purpose uh, contact adhesive. And now then, let's just pop this back out of the way, and we'll uh, we'll come we'll come to proper zoomed in shots in a moment. Um, these are the materials I used. Um, this was the uh, chamois I used for lining the bag. And now this is just slightly thicker upholstery fabric. It's reasonably strong. It's not fabric, I beg your pardon. It's upholstery uh, leather. And um, when you saw me uh, trim away the handle to the bag, um, all of the scales just totally fell away. This is the, this is the, uh, the handle. These are the crocodile scales that were falling away. All I've done um, is uh, taken the, uh, I've taken the uh, upholstery leather and I took the scales I had to put them in the correct order so they all fitted together like a jigsaw and I've literally glued them. I've glued them to the uh, upholstery leather and you know this this is just a, a piece in fact I think it was probably because uh, it, it was quite wide and uh, when it was glued um, there was plenty plenty of excess sticking out it's all been trimmed away I think this is the excess so um, I did them one at a time uh, and I, I used the um, it's a piece of, uh, it's, a, it's a sash cord um, that goes on the, uh, that goes on the inside here and um, it just keeps the, uh, keeps the roundness, keeps the round shape of the, of the handle, otherwise it would crush. And um, I just, in fact, I didn't use the sash cord, I was thinking about it, I used a pen, just, a, just I think it was a, a cheap big pen that was a very similar shape. So as I um, put the, uh, the crocodile scales on onto the uh, upholstery uh, leather there, it end, ended up rather flat. So I just used the pen, just forced it back in, you know, to, to create the curve. But um, let's, um, let's zoom in so we can get a really close up view of what I've done here. Okay, now um, zoomed in, we can uh, just turn that round. Um, we can see a little bit clearer. Um, this is the um, this is the replacement strap. The internal it's the internal. The, the, the crocodile skin is purely decorative on the uh, on the outside. That will go over the top in a in a few hours. Let me just get the original. 
Um, the original, um, it was it was very decayed. Um, it, it hadn't got much life left in it. There's a split there. Um, within a week or two of carrying this around, that would have snapped entirely. So um, I've made a simple replacement. Um, this was an old belt I got from a charity shop. And um, unusually, um, these are usually um, when you when you take the uh, the crocodile or alligator scales off the outside, and um, it's usually one long piece, you know, about sort of 12, 14 inches long, which is wrapped around twice. So you've got a double thickness. Um, but this one, it's, it's only got one thickness here. And um, as you can see, I've already attached one side. Um, the the sort of ears that uh, loop through, just pop the uh, locks down, the ears that pop through the brass, brass loop are separate. So that goes through and it's wrapped and, and, and stitched, it's stitched here, as I say to you, that side's already been done. Um, I've made some effort to sort of skive, just sort of slice the, um, slice the leather into a slight wedge. It could be cleaner, but um, it's not really going to be a problem because that is going to be completely covered with the, um, the crocodile skin uh, covering. Um, it's, a, it's a very straightforward job. It's just fiddly and time consuming. Now, if you look very carefully, it's already got the holes in the skin. Um, I did those with a domestic drill. Um, the, uh, the holes are in the crocodile skin, actually it's, it's alligator skin scales. Uh, remember these, were, these had all fallen apart. Um, that's simply been, um, they've been placed in order and glued to a little bit of um, upholstery leather. Here's, here's the leather, it's just, a, uh, just an off trim of it. It's quite thin, probably a little bit on the thin side for strength of the upholstery would need. Um, but it was perfect for just gluing one by one the alligator scales in line. And I used, um, I used a cheap pen just to force, just to force into the back here. Um, that's where the sash cord sits. Yeah, so we've got this lovely round shape. Um, so as, as, I glued, as I glued the scales down, they went flat, then I used the pen. I could have used, um, I could have quite easily used the original cord, just sort of push, push, you know, just really push it tight to get this, um, the round shape we needed. The sash cord would have sufficed, but it was a pen I had to hand at the time. So um, now that's, um, it's all nice and strong and it's all in one piece. That will wrap very, very well around the, um, I've got to fix, obviously I've got to fix the other side. And then we will uh, just wrap the handle. Of course, it needs the cord. The sash cord needs to go back in the hole. Actually, I think that was the one for the bottom, but never mind. Um, let's just, uh, just push this into place. There we go. Yeah, it's definitely the one for the bottom. It's a bit long. Try, try again with the correct one. So um, this goes on, the, uh, goes on the inside. Then that wraps over the, uh, over the strength, strong handle. The other side, bear in mind, it would have already been stitched. The, um, the ear will be stitched in place. And uh, yeah, so um, it's, quite a, it's quite a simple process. You can see now, looking closely, yeah, when this has all been, been stitched and pulled nice and tight, it, this will look pretty original again. And bear in mind, it's around about 130 years old, so it's never going to be perfect. But um, when you saw me uh, um, tr tr trim away with a knife along here and it just fell apart like a jigsaw, it's, it's quite a shock the first time you see that. You can never imagine that it will come back um, looking, looking reasonable. This is huge amount of work. Um, I, won't, I won't sort of say it's a quick job. It's not. Um, it takes many, many, many hours. Um, you know, from you know, whether we are lining the bag or cutting the cards to, to strengthen and stiffen the bag. And this is, is no, no, no short process, but it's a beautiful item and uh, I use it daily and I want to restore it such that it will pretty much last me for the rest of my life without having to restore it again. So realistically, I'm probably going to be spending about 40 hours um, starting and stopping over a period of days and weeks. Um, but. Um, that, that um, will all go on beautifully and um, yeah, you, you will never know that's been off. Um, what I've been very careful to do is use the, um, the original holes, obviously where the original stitches were, and there were holes in the skins. When the upholstery leather was applied to the back, there were no holes. So what I've done, I've laid it down on an old piece of wood and I've 
very carefully used a, a drill with a, it's only about a millimetre, and I've drilled through each hole to, so that the holes come straight through the skins on the other side. This is the, this is the new skin, that's the original skin. Then I've traced those holes onto, if you just get the light right, you can see those holes all in the, um, into the thicker leather. Um, I've traced those holes, so when, the, when this skin gets wrapped around, the needles should, in theory, if I, if I line them up correctly, the needles should slip through reasonably easily. So we've got quite a lot. We've got the alligator to stitch through, the new upholstery to stitch through, the thick band, um, the strong old belt, and then we've got the uh, alligator and the poultry skin the other side. So it's quite, it's quite some thickness to, to, to sort of fish through. And had I not drilled these holes, I would be having an awful difficulty um, pushing through here. Um, I will be using just, um, let's, let's get my little box of tricks. Um, I will be using just regular um, sewing needles. They're not, um, they're not upholstery needles. They're not leather needles. Um, actually, I think that's one, yeah, that's one and another. Um, there's nothing special about these needles. Um, they're just regular domestic needles. Very difficult for stitching leather. Um, but bear in mind the holes have already been the holes have already been cut. So um, yeah, that, that will uh, I can, you can sort of slide the thick needle along, and you can feel individual holes. And it should it should slip through with relative ease. Yeah, here it comes. Um, but uh, I'll need a pair of pliers as well. I, I, I find working in thimbles very clumsy. So um, I'll be using a pair of pliers uh, just to push it through and pull it the other side. Otherwise my fingers will be ripped to shreds. Um, it's quite a fiddly process and um, takes an awful lot of time, many, many hours. I would, I would anticipate probably spending five or six hours getting this handle back on this bag. So um, I've just got some uh, regular linen thread here and um, I'll need about, probably about a metre. So let's just, uh, let's cut off about a metre. And um, because it's reasonably thick and stiff, it's quite, uh, quite a lot easier to uh, thread the needle than it would be on a, on a finer thread. So I might be able to, to do this without the, um, the threading, uh, the little threading tool you get. Let's have a look. Uh, should has that gone through? Yes. There we go. Um, just so you use one thread and two needles with such a job, uh, and just get the needle and do the other side. It's quite a slightly fiddly job, but it's with uh, with thicker threads. It's far easier than with very very fine thread. There we go. That's, uh, has that gone in? No. Keep missing. My eyes are not what they were. <laughs> yes, we're in. Okay, so we've got uh, two needles on the same piece of thread. Now, um, all we do, um, the, the, holes are, the holes are already drilled. Um, it, it's going to be quite a fiddly job. I will not be able to do all this on camera. It's simply going to take too long. Um, to be honest with you, I do most of my um, most of my sort of fiddly, tiresome jobs and fit, you know uh, time-consuming jobs. I do I do them at work. I, I'm actually um, I'm not a leather worker by trade. I'm actually a hairdresser, and um, I uh, I take take my pieces to work. And um, in sort of quieter times, when you know waiting for waiting for business or um, maybe the other stuff are busy and I've got free time, I sit in the window where, where it's very very bright and um, there's plenty of space, the, 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 the daylight's very, very good. And, um, you know, sort of uh, in downtime at work, I, um, it's, my, it's, my, it's my own business, so I can get away with such behaviour. If I was in, I wouldn't exactly encourage my staff to behave like this, but never mind. So um, it will really, really will be a case now of um, just using the, uh, using the needles, just to, because the holes are already drilled, I can feel, um, I can feel the holes. Um, it's, they can be difficult to see. But you can feel them um, with a. It's actually quite a blunt needle. It's, it's, a, it's a normal domestic needle, quite thick. It isn't a leather working needle. Leather working needles have a much. They have a slightly different shape. It's um, um, it's like a, it's got like a slope to it. So there's a very sharp point, and it's it's um, it's like a wedge almost. Very sharp. I don't want to be poking new holes. Um, I want to try, wherever possible keep the original holes. Um, where are we? No, no, I just need to. Once you get the first one in, so there's one. Um, let's have a look. 
Now here's the hole on the other side. You, you get the first one in, it, it makes it a lot easier, but it is an awful fiddle. Um, I'll start this off on camera, but it's just going to be way too tedious for you to sit and watch me do the whole thing. It's a very repetitive process. So I've now got it through, through, through two pieces. And the third, we can see obviously I'm after that hole right in the corner there. So um, there it goes. Let me bring my pliers round. I don't need them at this stage, but I've got just a, a you know, small pair of pliers here. Um, sometimes you can't, you can't pull. Um, there's a lot of resistance. It cuts your fingers to shreds if you uh, force. So at that point, I'd use the pliers. So yeah, it's a, it's, it looks very fiddly. It, it's, it is quite fiddly. So now we've got all three sections stitched together. Now what I need to do is go through the next hole from the top. I can't really see it in this light, but I know it's there. I should be able to feel it. So if I slide the needle along, up oh, there it is. So you just sort of feel it slip in. And I'm now fishing around, fishing around, trying to, actually I can't feel it, but I'll, let's open it up a little bit. I'll be able to see. Yep, it goes through the second hole. And the second hole on the underneath here, once you've got a couple of three stitches in place, it tends to all be held in line. It's a lot easier to, um, a lot easier to feel. I just use the pliers just to pull that through. There we go. As I say to you, it's a rather repetitive and tedious process. So I'll just do a few stitches just to give you an idea. And it's just a case of repeat and repeat and repeat. So once you've got both pieces through in opposite directions, you can give a, give a bit of a tug on the uh, on the thread to increase the tension now then where's that uh, so that's at the first hole yes i need to come back let's have a look slightly uh, uh so do i need to go which way i can't see properly i don't normally stitch in this light so i'm struggling to see here we go yep so i need to use the th first second third hole now there it is, fiddling around. You can, you can, you can feel the holes because um, the needle is not terribly sharp and we don't want to be cutting new holes. So, I'm, you know, so I just fiddle around until you feel it slip through. There's, that's another one. Come on, there we go. That's it, there we go. And then it's back down the same hole. There we go. That's it. That's it. Now I take the opposite needle and go through the next hole in line. So we've, got, we've done one, two, three. So you're almost working in like a figure of eight. And uh, there we go. Yep. Because the hole's already drilled, it's, there's no there's no real uh, tension involved. It's just a just a fishing exercise. You can feel the holes with the with the rather dull needle. Here we go. That's it. So, yeah, you can see the threads coming through. Then I will put a bit of tension on, and that'll pull all that together. There we go. Just a case of getting all of the uh, all of the holes filled. Um, where are we? Next, no, that one goes down. Yes, sorting from the top. Yeah, once we've got all the holes stitched and filled, um, we can increase the tension quite easily. There we go. It's popping out the bottom hole there. So then this needle will go back into where this, the first needle gets pulled through. The second needle goes back through the, back through the hole um, the, in the opposite direction, creating almost like a figure of eight type stitch. It's getting slightly easier now because I've got a few stitches in it. The, the holes are being held in place. They're all in line. So there we go. It's through two pieces. Let's just try and get it through the third. Come on, that's it. It is a fiddle. So I'm struggling with the light here a little bit. I normally work in. There we go. Much brighter light. There we go. Just pop that through there, a bit of tension, that's it, it's starting to hold together quite well now. And this is the final stitch on the row, I can't see the hole, but if I slide the needle from the first hole to the next hole, I'll be able to, there we go, it just sort of drops in. Um, 
it's missing slightly there. It's, uh, there we go, that's through that one, and that's it out the final hole here. I'm just going to use my pliers, I don't want to be wrecking the tips of my skin. There we go. That's it, a bit of tension. Now take the opposite needle and work the other way. There we go, just wriggle, sort of wriggle it around a little bit, just trying to feel for the hole. There it is, it's out. And now that's it. So just give it a bit of a pull to increase all the tension. So you can see it's starting to take shape. Um, we've still got obviously the all all of the all of the other holes all the way around. And I will go I'll go all the way along, um, all four sides, and um, each stitch keeping the tension nice and tight. Um, bear in mind it's only it's only one thread with two needles and constantly pulling in the opposite direction. Um, I'm not going to do it all on camera. It's a very repetitive and tedious process. So I'm actually going to, because it's such a fine thread, I'm going to stitch around there twice. And then I will, um, I'll, I will even, on this one here on the other side, um, for extra strength, I've, I've got two more holes. Right, so we, as you stitch in a, stitch in a cube, then I'll, I'll, I'll poke two more holes in fact, I'll do them with the drill. When it's completely settled, I'll drill about six or seven millimeters apart, right in the middle there, one there and one there. And I'll simply stitch through and through and through and through, probably about 15 or 20 times. Um, it's difficult to see on camera, but um, that little dark mark that you see just here in the center is exactly that. It's, it's, it's two holes, one, two, and it's probably about um, 12, 14 inches of thread has been stitched through and through and through and through, pulled tight. Um, in opposite directions. I've stitched one way, then stitched the other. Stitched one way, then the other. Um, so that centerpiece is actually quite, quite strong. Even if the stitches around the edges here were to fail, it'd be unlikely that middle one would. And I'll do the same here at the very end. Um, now then, let's uh, just knot these um, needles off. So now that I've got this um, handle roughly in place, you can really see it starts to take shape. Um, let me just show you how it will look with the um, with the alligator skin back in place. So it'll probably take me about a minute to, to to thread all this into place. And once again, um, it's exactly the same process. Um, so which way that that way? Just uh, push push the alligator through through the brass loops. This is the alligator that was in total fragments, like a jigsaw, just all been glued back together with a, with a, with a, with a new backing, which is uh, upholstery leather. Come on. It's a fiddly old process. So I won't, uh, I won't do the whole thing on camera. So when the, when the, the, the strong band's been entirely stitched, I'll be coming back and I will put in so which way around does this go? I've got to, these are these are just sash cords um, from a, an old-fashioned Victorian window. You know, the type of window that goes up and down. Yeah, these are these are the these have got a weight hanging from it. Um, it's, it's it is definitely sash cord. Um, I think that's the top one. So that will go inside here to hold the hold the shape, stop it being uh, hold it nice and round, stop it with 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 use getting crushed and ending up flat. So, um, and then that one goes in the, in the bottom there. So I could have that the wrong way around. It's going to take me a lot of fiddling about. So when we've got the, 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 the strong band uh, stitched in place, I'll then go through with a new thread and do exactly the same process. And I'll be fishing through all of the holes with a, with a big long piece, about a metre long, and you know, working one, one stitch one way one stitch back down and, and each one will be pulled. So in, it's almost like a figure of eight. Each stitch needs to be pulled. Um, it will take me quite a few hours. I'm not going to do it all on camera. It's such a tedious process, but um, it's exactly the same as what I've just demonstrated to you there. Um, if the skin were not perforated, um, if, if it were new skin, I would probably use a leather needle, which has got a much sharper point. Um, but this is the original, it had the original stitch holes, which I wanted to maintain. And um, I've, I, I'm, desperate not to make new holes. So by, by using just regular needles, I can easily feel for those holes 
and feel for the various layers of holes. It, each stitch might take 30 seconds, a minute, just sort of fishing and fit, ooh, and then you feel it go through. Then you fish and fish and fish. You feel it go through the next layer and pull it out the other side. And um, it's just a case of patience. And um, by going through the original holes, when this is finished, you won't be able to tell that this has been restored. It will look completely original. Um, if, I, if I stab about to make all new holes, um, so the combination of new holes and old holes, it will look an awful mess. So um, I'm just working with domestic needles to ensure that I don't make new holes. Um, I'm going to um, finish this off, off camera. Um, you've seen me uh, do one corner. You don't need to see me do the whole thing. Um, it's, it's exactly the same process, just a lot of time. And um, I'm going to spend that time off camera. I would anticipate spending anywhere between three and five hours to get this handle back on, nice and tight with no bagginess, no floppy areas. And then we'll be um, coming to the next stage of this bag, which will be to reinsert the original lining.